Hi there. Hope you have a fantastic day today. This lesson, I will teach you how to solve simple quadratic equations. Of course, there is a PDF file version on the description below for you to download so you can work with me. Otherwise, let's go straight into it. So first of all, we know that 2 square is equal to 4. So because 2 square is 2 times 2. Or we have negative 2 all square. So negative 2 all square also give me 4. Because negative 2 square, that is negative 2 square. So if you put that on your calculator, you give 4 as well. In another word, negative 2 square is equal to negative 2 times negative 2. So that will give me 2 negative times together is a positive. So 2 times 2 is 4. So there you go. So if we have a number square, that is x square is equal to 4. So this means that x is either equal to 2 or negative 2. Because negative 2 square give me 4. And 2 square also give me 4. So if we have x square equal 4, the answer is x either equal negative 2 or x is equal to 2. Or we can write our answer in this way. Instead of write x equal to negative 2 or x equal to 2, we can also write x is equal to plus or minus 2. There you go. Positive or negative 2. Either way, okay? So let's go to another one. So if we have 5 square, 5 square is 5 times 5, that give me 25. And if we have negative 5 or square, so if you put that on your calculator, you should get 25 as well. Okay, so 25. So this means that if x square is equal to 25, so this means that x either equal 5 or negative 5. So x is either equal positive or negative 5. If you want to write like that, okay? Or we can write x is equal to negative 5 or x is equal to 5. So either ways, okay? You can either write your answer this way or your answer this way. So whichever one you like, doesn't really matter. So let's just go through a couple examples. First one, solve each of the flowing given your answer correct to two decimal place if necessary. So we have part A, x square is equal to 100. So opposite of square is square root. So square root is this. So we get rid of the square by square root both sides. So x is equal to square root of 100. But then we know that x square is 100. So x can be either a positive number or a negative number. So therefore, we can write in this way plus, positive, or negative. So square root of 100. So we can just simply put that on a calculator with this square root of 100, okay? If you know your square number, that would be fantastic. Otherwise, we just put in calculator. So we go square root, this button here, and 100. So there you go, give me 10. So therefore, x is equal to 10, but we have a positive, or a negative. So therefore, x is equal to positive 10 or negative 10. Or you can write this way. So x is equal to negative 10 or x is equal to 10. If you don't want to write this shortcut, you can also write like this, okay? Doesn't matter whichever way you like. So part B, x squared is 45. So opposite of square is square root. So we want to get rid of the square. So therefore, x is equal to square root of 45. So let me just write 45 first. So square root. And every time we square root a number, we should have a positive and a negative. Because x squared is equal to 45. So therefore, x can either be negative or positive number. So to work this out, we just need to put that on a calculator. So we just go square root of 45. So there you go. We need to correct to two decimal place. So because of 6.708, so we can write up to 6.70. But then the number after zero is 8, which is greater than 5. So it should be 
round up. So 70 with plus 1, so 71. So 6.71. So therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 6.71. So there you go, okay? Now part C, x squared minus 9 is equal to 0. Now to solve this, first of all, I move this negative 9 on this side first, okay? So that's easier. So we move that 9 on this side because the negative 9 we move over becomes positive. So this means that x squared is equal to 9 instead of negative 9. Now opposite of square is square root. So we want to get rid of this square, that's why. So therefore, x is equal to positive or negative square root of 9. So let's just put that on a calculator. So we go square root of 9. So there you go, give me 3. So therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 3. Otherwise, we can also write this form. So x is equal to negative 3 or x is equal to positive 3. So positive 3, we don't need to write the plus in front, we just write 3 we do. So x equal to negative 3 or 3. Party. Now to solve 3x squared is equal to 12, we first step is we need to get rid of the coefficient of x squared first. So the number in front of x squared. We need to get rid of that first. To do this, we divide this by 3. And we divide this by 3. So that cancel out. So this means that x squared is equal to, so 12 divided by 3, so that is 4. Otherwise, you can just put on a calculator 12 divided by 3, okay? So that give me 4. And then opposite of square is square root. So therefore, x is equal to plus or minus. Remember, every time you square root a number, we have a positive or a negative. So square root of 4. So therefore, x is equal to, so I can just put that on a calculator. So I go square root of 4 equal, see, it's 2. So therefore, x is either equal negative 2 or 2. So I can just write x equal to negative 2 or x is equal to 2. So the negative is this negative here is for this number. And the positive is for this. So positive 2, okay? So that's the answer. Now part E. So x squared over 5 is equal to 4. So what we need to do, again, we need to get rid of the 5 first because x is divided by 5. So get rid of this 5, I times 5 on this side and I times 5 on this side. So this 5 cancel out. So on the left hand side, we have x squared. And 4 times 5, you can put that on the calculator, but if you know your timetable, of course, is equal to 20. Then we know that opposite of square is square root. So if we square root both sides, so that means x squared become x. And of course, square root 20, we either have a positive number or a negative number. So square root of 20. Now we just put that on the calculator. So we just press square root of 20. So we'll press the square root button and we we'll press 20. So there you go, 4.4721 and so on. So we just need to write up to two decimal place because the number up to seven is two, less than five. So we keep adding this. So 4.47 is the answer. So therefore, x is equal to a positive and a negative, 4.47. So there you go. Part F. So 4x squared minus 64 is equal to 0. So step number 1, we need to move negative 64 on this side first. So to move this on the side, so negative 64 move on this side becomes positive. So this means that 4x squared is equal to 64. Of course, we need to get rid of the coefficients of x squared first. The coefficient of x squared is 4, so we need to get rid of that. So to get rid of that, we do opposite. So we divide, okay, because 4 times x squared. So to get rid of that, we do opposite. So we divide 4. But because we divide by 4 on the left, we need to do the same thing on the right hand side. We cross this out. So this means that x squared is equal to, and 64 divided by 4 
I can just put that on a calculator. So 64 over 4 or divided by 4 if you like. So that is equal to 60. So x squared is equal to 16. But then we need to get rid of the square because we want to find x, not x squared. So the opposite of square is square root. So therefore x is equal to square root of 16. But because we need to put a positive and a negative. So square root of 16. And that will give me, so therefore x is equal to so I just put that on a calculator, but if you know your square number, so 4 squared is 16. So therefore, square root of 16 is 4. Otherwise, you can just put that on a calculator. So you can just go square root, the answer. See, there you go, it's 4. So therefore, x is equal to 4, or x is equal to negative 4. So there you go. Please pause the video and try this one yourself. Hi there, I'm back. How do you go? So let me go through them with you, okay? Before I do that, please do not forget to give me a thumb up and subscribe if you haven't done so, so you can help me to grow my channel. So let's get into it. So first one, so x squared is equal to 64. So opposite of square is square root. So we have to take square root on both sides. So square root of x squared, it give me x. And 64, of course, we need to put a plus and a minus, square root of 64. And if you put that on your calculator, is square root of 64 is equal 8. So you should get either positive 8 or negative 8. So that is your answer. So now part B, x squared is equal to 13. Again, to solve for x, because opposite of square is square root. So therefore, x is equal to square root of 13. But then remember, every time we put a square root, we need to put a plus or a minus because negative two square, give me four. Two square also give me four. So therefore, we have a positive and a negative number. Just keep that in mind. So now I can just put down a calculator. So therefore, x is equal to, so we just go square root of 13. So there you go. So we have, 13.605 and so on, but we only need to round up to two decimal place, but the one after zero is five. So therefore halfway there. So we need to add one to this. So instead of 3.60 is 3.61. It doesn't matter whether you write positive number first or negative first, okay? So negative 3.61 or x is equal to 3.61. So there you go. You can either write your answer in this form or in this form. Doesn't matter. Okay. So part C, we have x squared minus 7 is equal to 0. So to do this, we need to move the 7 on this side first. Okay. So therefore, x squared, the negative 7 move on the other side become positive 7. So there you go. So now we just square root both sides. So square root of us x squared, give me x. And square root 7, we either have a positive number or a negative number. Square root 7. So therefore, x is equal to, so put that on a calculator. So it's just go square root of a number that is 7. So there you go. 2.645. So to correct to two decimal place, so instead of 2.64, because the number after 4 is 5, so halfway, we need to add 1 to 4. So the answer is 2.65, okay? So the answer is negative 2.65 or x is equal to positive 2.65. So there you go. Now part D. So step number 1 is we need to get rid of the coefficients of x squared first because 5 times x squared. So we get rid of that by do opposite. So we divide this by 5. Of course, whatever you do on the left, you need to do this exactly the same thing on the right hand side. So we divide this by 5. So if I divide this by 5, that cancel out. So therefore, we have x squared is equal to 100 divided by 5. You can just put down on a calculator and you should get 20. Otherwise, 5 go to 10. It 2 and we have a 0 left, so 20. So whichever way you like, doesn't matter. 
So opposite of square is square root. So we have x squared. So opposite of that, so we square root both sides. So that give me x and square root of 20. Of course, we need to have a put a positive and a negative. Square root of 20. So now square root of 20, we can just put that on a calculator. So we just go square root 20. So there you go. So 4.472, but because it correct to two decimal place, 4.47, because the number up to seven is two, less than five. So 4.47. So, so therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 4.47. Now, part E. So 6x squared minus 294 is equal to zero. So step number one is we need to move this number here on this side first. So negative, move on that side, or minus, move on the other side, becomes positive. So 6x squared is equal to 294. And then we need to get rid of the coefficient of x squared. That is, we get rid of this 6, we divide by 6. And whatever you do on the left, you need to do the same thing on the right-hand side. So you divide by 6. So that will give me, so cancel this first. So I just write x squared is equal to, I just put that on a calculator. So I just go 294 over 6, or divide by 6 if you like. So that would give me 49. So that is 49. Again, we need to square root on both sides because we want to solve for x. So opposite of square is square root. So square root both sides, so x squared become x. And square root 49, of course, we have a positive and a negative. So square root of 49. So I just put that on a calculator. If you know your square number, so we know that 7 squared is 49. So therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 7. Otherwise, you can just put that on your calculator. Square root of 49 should give you 7. So I write, therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 7. Part F, last one. So we have x squared divided by 3 or over 3 minus 12 is equal to 0. Again, we need to move this minus 12 on this side first. So minus 12 move on that side becomes positive 12. So let me write this down first. So x squared over 3 is equal to 12. Now, we need to get rid of the 3 first because x squared is divided by 3. To get rid of it, we time three on both sides. So we times three here, okay? And we times three on this side. So that cancel out. So therefore, we have x squared is equal to 36. So now we just need to solve for x. So opposite of square is square root. So we square root both sides. So x must give me plus or minus square root of 36. So we just put that on a calculator and you should get six. Because 6 times 6 is 36. So therefore, square root 36, give me 6. Otherwise, just type that on the calculator. Square root of 36. So you should get the answer of 6. So right, therefore, x is equal to positive or negative 6. Or you could write, therefore, x is equal to 6 or x equal negative 6. Okay? And thank you so much for watching. And I hope you got all of them correct. Bye.